All right, then let's call the meeting to order. Order or whatever. Yes. <laughs> order the meeting to call. There we go. All right, so um, first of all, I guess I'm obligated because it's in yellow highlighting from Greg that I am supposed to point out that it is Tom and Val's last meeting. So um, congratulations for the two of you having made it this far. Congratulations for getting off and um, take me with you. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any comments or questions for Val or Tom? Seeing none? All right. Tom, how'd you do it? How'd you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, OK. So as far as our new business action items, number one, staff's recommendation to revise the board meeting policy. Are there any questions? Any further discussion? If not, I see none. Can we, can we get the motion button up? All right, I'll make that motion. Okay. Ready to vote? Thank you. All votes are in. All right, and that motion passes six to zero. Okay, our next item, our first road bump in my ability to get through this thing quickly uh, is, uh, John, Johnny, I guess you're gonna be discussing item, the change to item 7.3. Yeah, Please keep you. in mind, we've all read and prepared, and so you can, you can just give us the highlights that you feel you need to. Absolutely. Anything, anything not covered in writing? Yeah, yes. pretty much. <laughs> One of the things not covered in writing for the myriad of board rules that we're suggesting to change is the 7.30, which we presented to the Disability Committee. It concerns the deadline to file an application for a disability retirement. And I inadvertently left out a deadline for someone who is service retired. <coughs> so you have a handout in front of you uh, which provides that deadline is within two years of service retiring, so long as you prove that you were permanently incapacitated since uh, the time you left. Okay. So, anyone have a question about that or any other rules? Okay. So, all right, then let's get a motion to it. Can I have a motion to approve uh, the item number two with the revisions <coughs> from Johnny? Ready to vote. All right. <coughs> And all votes are in. And that motion passes six to zero. All right, item number three, information technology plan, Sarah Dixon. And Sarah, on your way up, you can think about my one question. 50K for a plan, really? I can do it for half that cost. He just wants to prove he's read the materials. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reading the materials. <laughs> So the internal audit department would like to hire an IT expert to help us choose which IT audits to perform over the next several years. The audit committee charter requires board approval for any contracts outside of hiring the external auditors or the internal auditors, which is why I'm here today. The audit committee approved this motion yesterday with a 3-0 vote, and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, seeing no questions, can I get a motion to approve Sarah's request? Ready to vote. All right. votes are in. And that motion passes six to zero. Item number four, Ted, come on up. <laughs> <clears throat> it's times like this where I would have said something like, oh, is there anybody other than Ted who can talk about this? But Ted was such a dear friend at the board retreat that I have decided that, Ted, you go ahead. Take 30, 40 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> <clears throat> Anywhere you want, Ted. Today, this is your time. It does count against your total 15 minutes of fame in life, so I'm just letting you know that. So, so do, do spend it sparingly, but go ahead. Thank you very much, Tanasi. Thank you, Ted. Appreciate it. What's next on the agenda? <laughs> Short timer. <laughs> you have my budget materials, or our budget materials, uh, in front of you. Uh, the information I'm presenting is the FY 2020 budget. Now, I wanted to kind of highlight this particular slide. This is the overall big picture. We have a, a proposed budget of $13.7 million. This is approximately $200,000 less than what we had uh, budgeted for FY 2019. Um, something I did want to point out on this particular slide is that since 2014, our actual costs have relatively been flat. I know of no industry anywhere in the United States that has been able to manage costs that effectively. Uh, SCSRS has done a wonderful job with technology and uh, staff training. 
And looking at the overall budget components, you can actually see that salaries and benefits are approximately 57% of the overall pie. So that basically highlights the fact that we are a labor intensive organization and as a result, people are our greatest asset. And looking at the individual components for salaries and benefits, we have a budget of 7.9 million. Staff stays flat at 50. We're not changing headcount at this point in time. Um, we do have a proposed uh, increase uh, for um, FY20 related to the 3.3% uh, city pay increase plus adjustments to certain salary ranges that the city has actually implemented. Legal fees, Johnny and his staff and external counsel have done a wonderful job of resolving litigation. And as a result, our uh, legal fees will be going down quite substantially for FY20. And I also think it's, it's due to the success we've had in the cases that were brought by a certain plaintiff's class action lawyer who probably doesn't find it worthwhile to sue us quite as often um, as he used to. And uh, so I think holding tough, holding a tough position on a lot of these cases has helped us in the long run. Absolutely. <clears throat> for capital spending, we have approximately $130,000 for FY20. This is a reduction from the FY uh, 2019 budget. The one holdover from the FY19 budget is the Great Plains uh, upgrade that we will be pushing uh, forward to FY20. And with that, I will turn this over to any questions you may have related to any specific budget component. I, I just have two questions I want you to comment on because I think it's important. Specifically, you, you guys are not reserving on the legal fees issues for the Prop B litigation. Correct. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not questioning that decision, but I just would like, I think you should, that probably deserves some commentary because we know that's going to be something that's coming down the pike. So what was the issues with not reserving for that and, and how are we dealing with that? So one of the things that we're looking at is the, um, we don't know the direction which the Prop B resolution is going to take. So we don't know if it's going to be a significant event or a non-significant event. Um, so as it is a contingency cost, we thought it would be best to wait until we actually have a better feeling for what the path is going to be by the um, appellate court and what type of resources we need to deploy to it. And so for the legal fees, as those do, those contingencies actually would end up directly being charged to the three plan sponsors as part of our um, prepayment into the uh, administrative expenses for the three plan sponsors, we thought it would be best to actually take a contingency approach rather than um, the, putting the them into the budget. The reason I was asking is that we know there's going to be some cost. And so the difference between m having budgeted too little but having budgeted something is different in, than budgeting zero. Right. And then the plan sponsors having to bear 100% of that without any idea. That was my only, my only point. Right. But either way, it's been discussed, so I think it was the only issue. Anybody else have any other questions? Yep. Are we? Uh, congratulations on the uh, keeping the expenses flat. That's that's really impressive over the number of years that you've kept them flat. I notice you're you're going down one and a half percent from last year's budget. So uh, well done on that. The two the two areas that I just wanted to brief brief question on were the two areas where there seems to be a little bit of growth that I'm not sure if I fully understood, which was in professional services and actuarial services. Yes. Um, could you comment on those two, please? So with respect to actuarial services, uh, we have the um, I'm sorry, Marcel, you can you know, chime in here, but it's the experience study that we moved to FY20. So that's a cost and it's cyclical in actuary fees. So that will be um, uh, part of the FY20 uh, cost. And specifically related to uh, professional services, um, there are uh, two components um, that are being part of the IT budget for FY20, uh, the penetration testing, as well as boardroom operations because of all the different costs and IT would like to track those separately and we're calling those out specifically. Great, I appreciate, I appreciate those responses and penetration testing obviously with cybersecurity being what it is. Um, I would have no, I would strongly support doing all we can to protect our members. Thank you. So, Almas, the experience study is $142,000 of the budget for next year for the actuary, so that's a significant piece of it. All right. And Sarah's 50,000 is included in the budget. Awesome. I, I have one question. Ted, do you think that pastel stripes go with a red, white, and blue tie? And I'm just curious. 
You're asking. I just, you know, I did let you speak without any harassment whatsoever, but you go right ahead, Ted. Uh, <laughs> You're asking an accountant for fashion sense? <laughs> <laughs> Point well taken. I've been vindicated. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> it was either that or I was going to declare fake news. I wasn't sure which one on that one, so it's kind of a... All right. All right. Do we need a motion to approve the, uh, the budget? Ready to vote. All votes are in. All right, and that motion passes six to zero. Okay, under new business, no action items, the biannual report on travel and training. Anybody have any comments or questions? Seeing none, all right. Old business, no action requested, board election update. Anybody have any questions or comments? Seeing none, okie doke, staff reports. We've got, um, I understand from the special little highlighting section, so if it's wrong, blame Greg that Cynthia Queen would like to come up and discuss member services. <clears throat> so please come on up. By the way, Cynthia, I'm gonna excellent be ask, report. I'm going to be asking you the same question at the end. Mr. Priovalos? The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Nice to see you. I am going to give you a two for one on your efficient meeting today. Thank you. You already covered the election item, but for the record, I would like to state that our election process for this year has been completed with Charles Hogquist continuing in his second term that will begin next time. We thank you very much, Charles. And that we also have a new police safety member representative who will be Sergeant Louis Maggi, who you all met previously. Thank you to everyone for that information. Quick update on member services. Our communications manager, Jessica Packard, has accepted a position with a private company. I am thankful very much to her for her four years of contributions to SD SIRS. She's done a great job. The recruitment process is already underway. Looking Good forward to, to her, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thank right. you. And I would like to state that the call center is, of course, continuing to do a great job. We're at 20 second average call wait time right now. And lastly, and most importantly, <coughs> On behalf of member services and all of our membership, I would like to give a very sincere thank you to Tom Sullivan. Um, I believe that Tom has actually been an extension of the member services department to the extension that that is within his proper duties. He's been just an absolutely wonderful um, representative, um, a conduit for open information, and I do believe that his efforts have truly improved our relationships with our membership, which is of great importance to me. I thank you. And then I would like to give a very special thank you to Val Hoy, specifically from our call center with our hearts. I want to say not only that we thank you for holding us accountable for our customer service, which is very important to all of us, but you have been a person who has made the professionalism and the hard work of the call center, which is a very difficult job. You have made that greatly appreciated, and that has been um, a bonus for our entire organization. So I thank you very much. Welcome. Cynthia, thank you very much for those comments because it suggests that even I might have some nice comments on the day I retire. So thank you so much for that. That's awesome. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> I thank you very much. And finally, just because I can, thank you for reading my board report. Yeah. <laughs> Ted, where was your curtsy? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not that flexible. I I'm more interested in his tights. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when you're when you're retiring. You can say anything you want with impunity. I like that. All right. Can we get uh, Marcel? Yes. Fire away. Okay. Wanted to call out one of the items in my board report, which we've already just discussed briefly, which is the actuarial calendar. So we had talked about doing the experience study, either with the 63018 or the 63019 valuation, and based on input from the board and discussion with Chiron, that is getting pushed to the 63019, which is why you saw that budgeted amount in next year's budget. The other thing I wanted to talk about, I have been elected spokesperson for IT Investments Finance and Benefits Administration to give you an update on our disaster recovery exercise. So every other year, we conduct a disaster recovery exercise to make sure that in the case of a disaster, we would be able to still pay our retirees. So we conducted that over a couple weeks in February. We were able to get into our disaster recovery site which is not in California, and process payroll. And then we were able to go back in there and take the payroll files, and we actually paid February payroll using files from our disaster recovery site. So we we're able to confirm it worked. That, there were that some site hiccups. isn't in Russia, is it? No. Okay, no. I'm checking. 
Um, there, there were some hiccups. There have been every year. We expect that. The good news is there were not any issues that came up that would not have been resolved had it been a real disaster. They were resolved quickly, and we were able to complete the exercise. Happy to answer any questions you I'm may have. I'm going to be serious for a second. That's actually impressive and fantastic because I don't. I mean, I'm not even sure most people actually try to process out of their backup systems. That's that's amazing. So yeah. All right. No questions. Okay. Then. I will take the rest of the items and just ask the committee. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's David. Thank you. <laughs> were you going to curtsy or were you just coming up? <laughs> <laughs> He's been practicing. Awesome. I was creeping up. You're cre um, to follow on if you Marcel's curtsy, it'll be thought. creepy. But just, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> to follow on Marcel's thought as far as the disaster recovery exercise, uh, a credit, great credit goes to Mar uh, Michelle Wegner in the back of the room. She coordinated the entire event. Um, I did want to give you an update about the software upgrade to the Sire solution that we're working on. Um, May. We are May. So if all goes well, we're, we've installed it, we're, we're uh, progressing with the upgrade. If all goes well, it tests out because it's a very complicated system and we run it through the paces. So if it does work um, and all goes well, we plan on implementing for the May board meeting. Um, there is a plan to have open house training for the trustees. May 2nd, 3rd, and 8th. And the other thing that's coming along with this is we are revamping the agendas, streamlining them. So there, uh, currently there's the old business, uh, or new business, old business, and all uh, various sections. So we're, we're trying to streamline that. And I don't know if Greg wanted to expand. I will, uh, one thing we'd like to do is that the, the new upgraded software will be kind of the same look and feel, but it'd be a little bit different. So we are having some open house training, but if that, if the times that we suggest don't match with your calendar, you can contact us and we'll do something uh, that will help with your calendar. Also, we're trying to reserve some time before uh, the meeting uh, so that if even if those times don't work, we can make sure that you have some information on how the new system is going to work, how it's going to look and feel. Um, the voting will be just a slightly different. Some of the buttons to push will be slightly different. And looking at the agenda, we're trying to streamline it. So we were thinking about how do we make the lives better for our president, vice president, and committee chairs in the flow of materials and how we call action items, information items, and reports. So there'll be a slightly different agenda format, which I think will just help facilitate and speed up the flow of the meeting. So all in all, we think uh, I, I haven't seen the, the Sire system freeze up on the, the queue before, but it is an old system. It's over 10 years old at this point. Um, it is preventing us from upgrading to Windows 10. Uh, it's also preventing from going to higher versions of systems that, that we need to get to. So it, it, there's a lot dependent on getting this system in, and May is our target. Excellent. Anybody have any other questions for David? Seeing none, David, thank you very much. With respect to the remaining items under staff reports, finance, uh, the trustee's financial statements, and the 2018 year-to-date expenses, is there any questions from committee members on that? Seeing none, all right, let's move to any questions and comments. Seeing none, um, any non-docketed items? There are none. All right, then I move we adjourn the meeting.